In a shocking story from the Post Millennial, actually just reporting on the New York Times, we should pull up the New York Times story. Let me see if we have the, uh, we do have the story. They're claiming the election results are going to take a while. And it's unprecedented what we saw in 2020, that the election results weren't called that night. It's insane. Almost every single election, every election of my life on election. I remember being in Times Square. I think it was 2012. And uh, we were watching the election and in Times Square crowded. And they're like, the winner is. And we knew right away. Because here's how it works. It's It's decentralized. A precinct counts their votes and they go 751 for Obama and 229 for Mitt Romney. Click. And that number appears. A spreadsheet, not really, it's a program, but adds it all up very easily. And then you have the total number. And they go, that's it. Aside from any errors, er- errors it's ra- rather granular and decentralized and fast. Now, all of a sudden, since 2020, well, you know, we're not going to count the votes right away. They're going to come in through the mail, and we don't know, so we won't tell you who won. That is an absurdity, and it is insane. The New York Times says, Harris or Trump, once again, election results could take a while. No. New law. We should have a law that says you have election day. By midnight, the votes must be counted. Done. End of story. Bye. You have from 12 in the morning. So if you want to do mail-in votes, you got you got 12.01 a.m. Okay, twelve. you got 11.59 the ballots should be in. And then right at midnight, you got 24 hours, 24 hours. Start counting. You can do it. Why not? Count them all then. Count them all. I mean, honestly, I say no mail-in voting. It should be in person. Ballots should be blank. You have to know who you're voting for, but that's just me. More Americans are using mail-in ballots, which takes longer to count than those cast in person. Well, there, there, there is truth in the general sense. You, you vote in person on a machine or a piece of paper goes through. They can look at the, they can pick up the paper and say, Trump, you know, they click a thing, click Trump, click Harris, Trump, Harris, Trump, Harris, whatever. With mail-in votes, they look at the signature, tear them open, pull the ballot out. That adds more work. But I think it's all shenanigans. The New York Times says the host of election night parties may want to book a room for more than just one night. For the second straight presidential election, it's becoming increasingly likely that there will be no clear and immediate winner on election night and that early returns could give a false impression of who will ultimately prevail. Large swaths of Americans have changed their voting habits in recent years, relying increasingly on mail-in ballots, which take more time to count than those cast in person. States with uh, with prolonged vote counting processes, such as Arizona, have become (laughs) such I love this, have become suddenly competitive. And the race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump are extremely close. If a winner is not declared on election night, it will not necessarily point to failures in the process. More likely, it will be a result of the intense security measures required for counting mail-in ballots. Election officials across the country are trying to telegraph to voters that waiting long hours or even days for a result is not unexpected in a close election. They are eager to counter conspiracy theorists who may seize on the uncertainty as evidence of fraud or malfeasance. My friends, this is not news. This is not a news story. This is propaganda. This is priming. There is no reason the New York Times has to tell people this. They are priming you for what is to come. Here's news. Uh, Election official says. Election results may take longer than expected with a high, a high percentage of mail-in votes being requested. That's news. This is Nick Corasaniti of The New York Times writing an opinion piece about what he thinks may happen. Now, I have a question. Um, does this say opinion anywhere on here? Oh, it doesn't. Nowhere does it say opinion. So why is he writing it? Just like in 2019 and 2020... 2020, they were calling it the red mirage. They said, you're going to see Trump win, but wait, because then they're going to count mail-in votes and Biden will win. What? Well, yeah, because mail-in votes are going to favor Democrats. So that means that even if Trump wins on election night, 
Biden wins. Seems a little odd, doesn't it? And for that reason, I believe it should be illegal. Let me tell you. The Democrats are going to claim, but mail-in votes make it easier and more accessible for people who can't vote. Don't care. Voting was never meant to be easy or accessible. Uh, within certain reason. Accessible in that you should be able to get into the building and cast your vote. Sure. So there's got to be, you know, a flat entrance or a wheelchair ramp. I'm okay with that. Maybe an elevator or a chairlift. I'm saying voting is your responsibility. We will accommodate you in, in a way that is reasonable. The, I think ballots should be blank. The idea that we're going to give people a list of who they can choose from is stupid because it's not an exhaustive list. You write down the name of the person. If you get it wrong, it's your fault. Now, the game is this. We're going to mail you a ballot, and then we're going to go collect them. But these people didn't want to vote in the first place. We're getting the opinions of people who don't care. A system cannot survive if it is run based off the opinions of people who don't care about the system. It is a fail-safe mechanism to make sure that only those who truly care enough to go vote, vote. Additionally, voting, uh, voting day should be a holiday. Everyone should get a paid day off on voting day. I mean, it, you know, there's always a challenge with being an employer. The idea the government's going to tell you have to pay people for this day or whatever. We, 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 we work by salary here anyway, so I don't know. I think election day should be a day off, guaranteed holiday, because right now it favors the unemployed. So what are you going to get? Policy that favors the unemployed. The game they're playing right now, my friends, is simple. They are going to be able to count the votes see if they win, and then find the votes. You may remember Donald Trump had that phone call where he said to the, I think it might have been Brad Raffensperger, whatever, just find, the, find me the votes. The Democrats intentionally interpret that as make votes that show I win. That's stupid. Trump is saying, you got all these votes. They're there. I know you can do these recounts. I know you can find votes for me. That's what he's saying. I don't think it was good for Trump to say, not at all. He's not saying fabricate votes. He's saying find more Trump votes. They're out there. And um, I believe we did. There were like USB drives with uh, digital, uh, uh, you know, from electronic machines that contained votes for Trump. And, and some numbers got, uh, got flipped. Ultimately, not enough. Either way, I don't think Trump should be doing these, saying these things or whatever in election, whatever. It's fine. The point is this. Democrats literally do it. So as it happens, with all these mail-in votes coming in, and with signature verification being now lax, this should not be legal. When the votes are by midnight, whatever that number is, we are done counting. If you don't report your votes, too bad. Oh, I know. There's still problems there. Democrats are going to try and sabotage Republicans by having their vote tallies not uploaded on time or whatever. Maybe it's fair to say 3 a.m. is the cutoff or maybe 9 a.m. the next morning. But the idea that we give additional days or weeks to count votes is insane because this allows people time to commit fraud and it serves no benefit. If if a if a vote is not count is not counted on the day of the election, it doesn't count. That's it. I'll put it this way. If I write if I vote by by mail, I mail it in. It arrives late or it's not counted till later. They say, well, we should we should be allowed to count it. OK, then why can't I show up three days after the election is over and fill out an election, fill, fill out a ballot? They'll say, well, you know, mail and mail ballots were turned in on time. It's just our fault. I disagree. If a ballot is not counted properly, then I don't you, you don't count it. Of course, we still have the risk of fraud. Individuals who are supposed to be doing the counting, doing the counting wrong or intentionally putting bad numbers because they're trying to favor one candidate or the other. But that's why you have two or three people counting the ballots. If I can't walk into a voting uh, station a day later and hand a ballot, they should not be counting mail-in ballots either. They should just say these were all, these were, these are deposited late. Let me put it this way. Let's say uh, you have, um, they allow people to harvest. There are some states that allow a, a third party to take your ballot from you and go and drop it off for you. You sign their name and say, this is my, you know, chosen represent, uh, rep. They're going to take your ballot for you and drop it off. They say this is so that if uh, you have a family, one person can collect all the ballots and go drop them off. OK, so uh, I am going to send my mail in vote. It's done. It's filled out. It's signed in the envelope. 
I then give it to the designated carrier. He says, I'll drop it off tomorrow after the election. Nope, don't count. Then why does the post office get the benefit? Why is it that we allow the post office to go, well, we're not going to drop it off till after the election's over. Nope, <clears throat> no dice. This is not only going to create opportunities for fraud, which the Democrats will claim doesn't happen anyway, but I don't care. I, it's, it's like, hey, banks shouldn't have security guards. No one's going to rob it anyway. I don't know. Sometimes it happens. Why open the possibility for robberies? But that's besides the point. Ultimately, I think we have to maintain credibility in our elections. And if we're telling people there's an opportunity to cheat, people are going to feel like it's not secure. And then what do you get? Chaos. And my friends, while we're looking at the second assassination attempt on Donald Trump, the last thing we need is uncertainty and chaos in this election. But they don't care. People are going to do whatever they have to do to win. And I think it is dangerous territory. So we're going to we'll, we'll leave that one there. Smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. The next show, of course, is going to be 8 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast IRL. This is going to be a big show considering more information is coming about coming out about the assassination attempt. And we'll have this conversation around that as well as many other uh, uh, many updates. So become a member by going to Timcast.com. Follow me on X at Timcast. Stay tuned. We're doing this show Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Don't miss out. Friday mornings, of course, is the Culture War podcast. Thank you all so much for hanging out and we'll see you all tonight.